everyone, Pushing Up Rose is here, and today we're taking a look at King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella. This graphic adventure game, which uses the classic text command mechanic, was released in 1988 and developed by Sierra Online. This was a groundbreaking title at the time and had many firsts. This is the first in the King's Quest series that has a female protagonist. Previous titles had you play as either Graham or Alexander. It was also the first in the series to have a mouse, though not a point-and-click game, you could use the mouse to control the character, while the parser was still being used to give commands. Most impressively is that it was one of the first, if not the first, commercially released PC games to support sound cards. Previously, games used the built-in PC speaker for sound effects and some music, but songs or musical scores weren't exactly realistic. This rendition of Green Sleeves from the first King's Quest makes me want to stick sharp pointy objects into my ears. Okay, that's enough of that. In these earlier King's Quest titles, you would play to absolute, utter silence. When I was a kid, I would usually have music playing beside me to help with the mood. I find that heavy metal is a satisfactory choice. William Goldstein, famous for composing music for well-known television titles such as the Fame series and some notable movies, was hired to write the game's soundtrack. I never noticed this during gameplay, but there are over 75 original music pieces throughout the game. It's quite magical and fitting for the different settings you come upon. This is such a departure from the previous King's Quest games, where the most exciting sound clip you could get was Alexander's PC speaker snoring. There are two versions of this game, one made for 8086 computers developed with Sierra's AGI engine, and one made with the SCI engine which supported higher resolutions. Sierra always pushed the envelope for new technology, but they also didn't want to forget their fans who couldn't afford newer computers at the time, so I think it's pretty damned great that they developed two versions, clearly with different art as you can see in this comparison. You play as Rosella, daughter of King Graham and Queen Valenice of Daventry, and twin sister to Alexander. In the last King's Quest game, Alexander escapes the confines of an evil wizard and rescues Rosella from a three-headed dragon. When they both return home, King Graham is delighted to see them and decides to play the classic game of Who's the Favorite Child? by tossing his adventurer's hat toward them. However, before either of them can fight over it, Graham suffers what I presume to be a heart attack, but by the look on his face, it could just as easily be fatal constipation. Too much excitement in one day, I suppose. After this brutally depressing cutscene of everyone staring at the king on his deathbed, Rosella excuses herself to grieve. But alas, the magic mirror starts talking, which in any other context besides a high fantasy game would be slightly psychotic, but this mirror serves as a communication device. Not sure how it works exactly, but when Rosella approaches the mirror, she sees a tiny woman in it. You'd think she'd see herself, because it's a mirror but that's not how things work in fiction. The character reveals herself as the fairy Janesta, who suspiciously looks like Rosella. I've thought about this, and perhaps there is symbolism here. Perhaps Rosella is a fairy in her heart and has metaphorical magic powers. Or they just had limited designs, that could be it too. She brings Rosella to the land of Tamir with promises of finding a magical fruit to help cure her father's ailments, but there is a catch. Janesta herself is dying and needs Rosella to find her magical talisman, which was stolen by Lelote, an evil fairy living in the Impossible Mountains, which is not just a clever name. Rosella has little choice, as Janesta is not well enough to send her back to Daventry, so basically, Rosella has to get this shit right or she's stuck in Tamir. Janesta uses the last of her powers to disguise Rosella as a peasant girl, then flies back to her castle across the sea. Rosella can then start her journey in Tamir with two objectives. Find the magical fruit to heal her father, and find the talisman to heal Janesta. All King's Quest games can be diluted to journey afar and find the thing. Roberto Williams stated that the storyline for this game came about due to some rumors. Before King's Quest IV was released, word leaked out that Graham would have a heart attack and might die. Fans were upset enough to write in asking to save Graham. 
From there, Williams develops some of the game's mechanics. There is a time restraint. It takes place over a 24-hour period. Eventually, it becomes nighttime, which is sort of a day-to-night mechanic, but it doesn't turn to night gradually. It's triggered by completing a series of puzzles, so I'm not sure what you would call that. Regardless, it was really neat to see all of the scenery at night, which changes specific to the evening. Tamir is a beautiful land inhabited by mythical creatures as well as human beings. You find a loot player, a satyr, otherwise known as Pan, an impoverished fisherman and his wife, the Seven Dwarves, Cupid, and of course, Lelote, who I'm pretty sure is using mashed up peas as her foundation. Despite Rosella's strong nature and opposition to established gender roles, she still somehow finds herself cleaning the house of the Seven Dwarfs. But hey, if you were rewarded a pouch of diamonds for doing this, you'd do it too. The point of this game is similar, if not completely the same, as other adventure games. Solve inventory object puzzles and help whoever you can to get to your goal. What makes this game stand out from its predecessors is the difference in its art and animations. It has EGA graphics, or 16 colors, but despite using the same amount of colors King's Quest 3 did, the SCI version shown here is so much more impressive. The game uses a technique called dithering, meaning two colors are juxtaposed to create the appearance of another color. It creates a nice shading effect and beautiful detail to really express the whimsy of Tamir. Even though games prior to King's Quest IV used this technique, it was more effective in the SCI version, which supported higher resolution graphics and advanced animations. One of the things I appreciate the most about this game is its rather bleak tone. Your father is dying, you're trapped in Tamir, and even Tamir, despite its otherworldly appearance, is hard on its luck. There are a lot of darker elements in this game, like this haunted house. There is a whole puzzle dedicated to helping a family of ghosts rest peacefully after their tragic deaths. There's even zombies, which pop up at night. I don't quite know what it is that makes me feel this way, it could be the time limit, but everything feels very serious and desperate. The King's Quest games usually have their own cheeky brand of humor, but this one definitely lacked in silliness. And I'm okay with that because I think it adds a lot of depth to the characters. It's not all tragedy in Tamir, of course, there's also absurd puzzle design. Despite the technical advancements the game had made since King's Quest 3, King's Quest 4 still has some painful puzzles. There's one where you have to purposely get swallowed by a whale, and climbing out seems to be... a thing. I must say though, that whale has nice teeth. There's a part where you are completely in the dark despite this lantern. This is the most useless lantern I have ever seen in my entire life. What is the point? Trial and error at its worst. You will fall down chasms. You will get eaten by a Gru. You will lose your goddamn mind. But this is an important setting because beyond this dimly lit hell is the magical fruit. Near the beginning of the game, you are apprehended by Lelote's goons, which I suppose can be compared to the Wizard of Oz's flying monkeys, and she's suspicious of you and gives you all these tasks to complete. One of them is finding Pandora's box. Look out for the mummy! Oh. Let's open Pandora's box. I'm gonna do it. The evils shall be released. The monsters, the huge, horrible, grotesque demons! That's it? Those were the evils in Pandora's box? Those things aren't capable of evil? At the most, mild annoyance where people have to swat them away like mosquitoes. Point is, death waits for you at every turn. These trees, they'll kill ya. These ogres, they'll kill ya. These stairs, they'll kill ya. Lelote has the talisman, so it's up to you to find out how to get it while doing these tasks for her so she won't kill you in the meantime. Her son, Edgar, becomes infatuated with you and helps you along the way. He also uses peas for foundation. When you defeat Lelote and snag the talisman, you can give it back to Janesta and she gains her power back. By the way, you better have gotten that magical fruit because you can forget to take it. And if you forget to take it, you get the bad ending where Rosella returns to Daventry and watches her father die, making the entire trip to Tamir completely pointless. So yeah, don't forget, it's depressing when you do. Before Janesta whisks you back to Daventry, she turns Edgar into a handsome Prince Charming because beauty is everything. And I use the term handsome very loosely here, I'm just not into He-Man haircuts. He expresses his love for Rosella, who he has known for mere minutes, and Rosella rejects him. BAM! Wrecked!
Thank God, fuck all these flowery love stories. Rosella's dad is the priority here, not finding a handsome prince. No offense, Edgar, I'm sure you're a fine human being despite that bowl of hair on your noggin, but King Graham is way more important. The game ends with Graham eating the magical fruit and regaining his health. Then he decides, you know what? Screw you kids, I'm not done adventuring. Give me that hat back. And it ends on this lovely screenshot. By the way, this is what happens when you leave your game running overnight. Good to know it cares about Rosella's well-being, but stop projecting. I can take care of myself, gosh darn it. The Perils of Rosella is a classic adventure game with all the elements of fantasy and tragedy rolled into one fantastical experience, with the cherry on top being that it includes an awesome, strong female lead. Also, there's a unicorn! Just go play it. Go. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review of King's Quest 4, and why yes, I am doing my King's Quest reviews completely out of order. If you want to see more King's Quest related videos, check out the annotations. If you want to talk to me about Sierra games and tweet me amusing gifs, follow me on my social media pages, and if you want to support the show and hear me talk about PC games forever and always, consider becoming my patron. My parrot will appreciate the extra seed funds. Thanks, and see you guys in the next one.